and share screen. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today's topic, let me get it started here, is what is AI and can it be used for real estate? So this is a hot topic that uh, people are talking about, agents are talking about using AI. I see more and more articles popping up on different uh, real estate websites and uh, on real estate news about using AI to help you uh, in real estate. So we're gonna go over some ideas, but this is a brand new thing. It's gonna be, uh, when as soon as this kind of came out, I kind of viewed this as like, Deb Ray way back when, oh my gosh, uh, where uh, companies are going to have websites. <laughs> How and PDFs, use, right? <laughs> use websites and things like that. I remember it was in 2005, I did, uh, I joined Century 21. And it, at the time, the people at Century 21 in corporate thought I was like top of the chain of, of, um, using technology. I remember back then, uh, they used to call me when they had classes and say, don't answer your phone. Honestly, this is what's happening. They would call me, so trainers for Century 21 Corporate would be at other Century 21 offices or in at conventions and areas for Century 21. And they say, please, we're putting you on a mic in a bit for all these agents and brokers in a big room, don't answer your phone. And they were they were floored because my voicemail said, for a quicker response, text message me. And back in 2005, they're like, "What's to text messaging?" You know, it's almost 20 years ago. Yeah. You know what? What do you mean? What do you? What, what's the text message uh, on that? And I think the next year, year after, I did a uh, class on technology, and this is right before the iPhone came out. And I used an example, like, "Look at this thing that people are going to have." And they're going to be able to search real time what houses are for sale in a neighborhood while they're in their car. <laughs> and people are like, what's this strange thing? It's going to be a iPhone where you could get on the internet and search, not just call people. I get this, this, it sounds like not so long ago, but it was, you know, it's almost 20 years ago and the, the technology has changed. So this well, the whole point I'm getting to that story is this is going to speed up that we're going yep. to be talking about, like I'm talking about text messaging uh, almost 20 years ago. We're going to talk about AI in about four years from now going, oh my God, four years ago when it's the first it came out. Now it's like we're using it for everything. Right. So I think exponentially technology grows. So I think if you get in and reading about it and learning about how it could help you with your business, uh, is the best thing you can do because it's the brand new technology that's going to speed up even more to things that we don't even know about. We, you know, we don't even know how much this is going to affect us. So this is just the beginning. So did I do a good job explaining that? You did. <laughs> and kidding. also, I just want to bring into the fact that we're already using AI. So many people in their daily life already is using AI, and they just don't even realize it. Your Alexa, your Siri on your iPhone, your Bigsby, that's AI. You're talking to an artificial intelligence person. That's AI. When you have a help little bubble that pops up when you're on a website and it says, can I help you? And you click on it and there's a little bot inside there. That's AI. So we're already using it. Now we're trying to figure out how can we incorporate it in our real estate daily lives to make things better. Oh, the other person that's already using AI is guess who? Zillow. The Zestimate that's all AI. So is it good or is it not so good? You make the decision, right? Right. And I think the next thing too, I don't know if you saw this video and it was a couple of years ago, but it's Google Assistant. They have the technology now. You could get it um, that, uh, and it's just going to get even better is that they, it was in, in front of Google, they were doing a you know big reveal of the new assistant or whatever and had AI connected to it, a uh, virtual assistant. And the person said, hey, Google Assistant, please call my, uh, my the hair salon and book me appointment to for next week on Wednesday. 
and it called up and the other person on the other line did not know it was a fake person. It was an artificial person talking. So wow. they were talking to the person. He played it, you know, the recording and it booked them an appointment and kept on saying two o'clock, no, three o'clock. And it said, and, you know, and it booked the appointment and the other person on the other line had no idea that it was a, wasn't a live person. So this is, I think that is going to, really be the next thing for real estate and marketing. We're going to be able to call people, set appointments up, you know, do marketing. I get, of course, not to go down a rabbit hole. I could see a whole bunch of, because <laughs> we, you know, all the laws with telemarketing and stuff like that. Now you, you don't have, to, uh, you could get, you know, technology to make your cold calls for you. <laughs> so, uh, but you, you want to be on the cusp of knowing all about this and, and, and jumping on it when you can. So, all right, I'll let you get started after that long introduction. So, go oh ahead. no, that's <laughs> fine. I, these are just a few things that I've uh, checked out myself as far as what you can use for real estate and for tools. And I also did, uh, I watched a really good video from NAR about different things and we'll get into that in a second but some of the top ones so they do have the google assistant like you just said but they also have bard and bard is the chat gpt of google so if you wanted to continue with your google uh, along with all your other google tools you can use bard um, or you can go to chat gpt so chat G gpt creates written content and this is where most agents are uh, using AI in their real estate is with the chat GPT because it can not only uh, create a profile for you with a few prompts, but it can also create descriptions or remarks for your listings and things like that. Um, the uh, crisp is for audio and sound. So if you that one, I believe you have to pay for chat GPT has a free version and Bard also has a free version. Canva is already using AI. So if anybody uses Canva to make marketing material, AI is embedded into Canva already. So you're already doing it and you just don't even know. Matterport, we had the camera for a little while here at the office. Um, it does 3D tours, but that's AI again. So reimagine home uh, is for staging. So if you want to do virtual staging in your properties, you can uh, hook up with that. There's several other companies. Uh, Modzi is another virtual staging one. That's all AI. The thing that you have to remember as a real estate agent is when you're doing chat GPT or you're doing reimagine, uh, reimagine changes what you're seeing inside the home, right? So you got to be careful of that because you don't want to be hiding cracks in a wall or anything like that because you're portray you're portraying the property in an incorrect light. So you you got to yeah. watch that stuff. And I've had a few agents actually just happened this week or last week. An agent was going to hire you know do one of those uh, virtual. Uh, staging and the legalities of it and all of that. I just said, put in the description that it's uh, virtually staged just to protect yourself. But my personal opinion, again, this is my personal opinion, not my legal head opinion. Uh, I've seen, you know, when this first came out, virtual staging, people getting upset. I, I view it as no different as, again, not if you're cor correcting any cracks <laughs> or stuff like that, but if you're putting furniture in, it's no different than you taking a picture of a house when people live there and then they moved out and it's vacant now. It's no different, but as long as you're not changing you know, uh, the kitchen, you know, like cabinets or <laughs> countertops or right. anything physical, it's just dust the furniture. Uh, you can you can do that, uh, my opinion. But always to say it can't hurt to say this is virtually staged on that. So I think it's a great thing. Uh, I just feel that we got out of the virtual staging and and 3D tours. I mean, like example, we had a camera in the office for several years. We got rid of it because no one was using it. And the reason mm -hmm. no one was using it is because listings were selling so fast. No one wanted to go through the the trouble to get it to the house, pay for the servicing of it, and all of that uh, because listings were selling so fast. 
it's going to turn around again. It's going to get to the point where listings aren't selling as fast someday when in the future. And we're going to probably go back to the staging and the virtual staging and the and the, the 3D camera, the 3D uh, virtual tours too. I have a feeling that's going to come back into play soon. So yeah, as far as chat GPT goes and your description of your house and stuff, or even if it writes a bio for you, remember to make sure that you are rereading it and you're adding your own personal flair because we have to stay within our ethics, right? So article two uh, of the Realtors Association talks about what we are not allowed to do. So you can't exaggerate or misrepresent a property or conceal pertinent facts, which would be the crack in the wall. You can't take that away because it's there, right? You have to be honest and truthful in your communications. So you can use the chat GPT to help you with your description, but you're going to use it as a as a tool. You're not going to have it just write the description and then throw it out there and not proofread it because you're the one that actually saw the house. The little bot person that I had on the other page did not see the house, right? He's just going off of what you say. So just if you do that, then you will um, be okay as far as your um, legal things that you have to do. Exactly. All right, next. Well, we're done with um, AI. <laughs> I mean, well, that's a good yeah. Thing. Right, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on AI or anything, no, but just, I just yeah. wanted to give everybody a little. Uh, right. You know, you can use it. You can go ahead and look at a lot of the free versions of things. That's what I suggest. Don't pay any money this, until things start to to boost up in the industry. But this is I, I, again. I can't stress this enough. I think this is a brand new technology it's not like a tool what i mean well it's kind of tool. like it's not like okay now agents have websites or contact management systems or lead generation things this is something that ai is something that other a lot of other businesses and places and people are going to use it just regular people are using it not just for business mm -hmm. so you just want to be up to date with it because I think it's going to, uh, there's going to be things that I can't even think of that that is going to do. And you don't want to kind of miss the boat. Miss out. So, yeah. so just keep an eye on search for articles about AI, how to use in business, watch for articles through uh, you know, National Association of Realtors. Just, you know, if you want to research anything on technology and how to help it with your business, continue to do it because this is going to continue to grow. Yes. So don't wait for us to give you an update <laughs> on that. Yes. Yep. So, for sure. Some company updates. Yep. Uh, the new Ohio State Purchase Agreement has been out now since April. Uh, we've rolled it out to our agents, so to speak. It's on all of our platforms. I created a PowerPoint that's on Homestar Office in the coaching tab. I also did a video, you guys, because it is a little bit scary and intense, but it's very good. It's a good purchase agreement. It covers a lot of things so that you don't have to be writing them in there anymore. It protects your buyer. It also calls out the seller and tells them certain duties that they have uh, to do. Um, so if you want more about that, I'd be happy to go one-on-one. -on -one. I can get through it a little quicker now. It was taking me hours before, but now I can get it down under an hour. Uh, I think my video ended up being around 40 minutes. So that's not that bad. For, no, that's good. 10 pages. Definitely. So right, definitely. It's definitely good. So definitely check that out. Uh, we are changing our minimum commission. This is all Homestar agents, by the way. So you can get out if you're not a home star agent here yeah, but and then again um, just the, the stress out there is that uh to our agents is that uh we had a minimum commission we do have minimum commission as an office to our buyers and to our sellers uh was 250 uh 250 dollars which we had for so long i mean 20 years i think i started this uh oh, close to 20 years ago and never raised it uh that cost ever in 20 years but now you know as I had more and more agents coming over from over the years probably recently or last year or two saying wow yours is so low compared to everybody else's <laughs> and I never we never raised it uh for 20 years so now we're still in the lowest part where now we just raise it to 350 dollars minimum commission to the seller 
and it's a it's a flat minimum commission that your buyers pay for their services. So if yeah. you need any, you know, I'm not gonna go, we're not gonna go into detail exactly of all of that. But if you need any help ex- understanding that or explaining that, uh, please call Debbie or myself, and we could help you with that. But I wanted to stress, we're still as far as I can see, out of any major companies, we're still the lowest. Correct. <laughs> yep. So, yep. We're still the lowest. And. and- uh, surveillance language yeah you want to talk about that one yes please so uh the i won't go back and forth on the legal thing thing but i think the ethical or professional thing to do is when you have a listing that you notify the other side of uh you know in the listing that if they're being recorded if they're being recorded, uh, you know, video and sound, because in today's day and age, when you go to a house with a buyer, I feel that some buyers and, and uh, buyers agents forget or don't know or don't realize that there are cameras, ring cameras at the door uh, that, but I'm not talking about doing anything wrong uh, or anything. It's just that they're listening to your conversations. Yep. So many times you go through the to the home and with your buyer and you have the uh, thought or you have the you feel like you have some sort of uh, secret or secret or what's it? The confidentiality. No yes. one's listening to you because you're tell you're talking. So many times I remember, you know, I've been in the business thirty years with my, my own buyers. I'm having conversations with them right there at the counter at the island of the kitchen about what offer we're going to present and what do we think the house is worth because we're sitting there right in front of each other discussing this while you're there. Uh, I could go on and on about train. I um, just quickly, I feel that you should have the conversation with the buyer in the house right there. Kind of like car dealerships. When you go buy a car, they have all those windows and they have you looking at the car while you're signing the papers and discussing it. Same with the house. So many times agents go, okay, let's leave. Uh, Go back home. Call me later. We'll discuss the house. You're there. If they want to put an offer on it, discuss it. But remember, they might be listening to you and that could affect your offer in a bad way or a good way or know your your. you know, like poker, they, they know your hand or they know your, 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 um, what you're going to offer and what you'll go up to <laughs> Yes, and things like that. So the whole point of that story is, as two parts is one, when you have buyers, make sure for the moment you walk up to that front door, you're being watched and you're being listened to. Two is, uh, when you're getting in the house too. And the other side of things is that when it's our listings, we feel it's fair slash legal to let the buyer's agents know that they're being watched or listened to um, if they have cameras, nanny cams, or whatever you want to call it in the house or outside the house. So that's the, the point today was that in our listing agreements, we are asking the sellers, please let us know if there is listening devices or recording devices so we can let the other side know so uh, they could uh, either feel more comfortable or there's not a legal problem in the future towards our seller because some buyer thinks that they their privacy was um, uh, taken Violated. away. Because there is, I will say this, you know, some type of gray area, if you could record somebody, uh, their voice, uh, or that in the house or out of the house or all that, I'm not going to go to legalities of it, but just to be safe, let's just let everybody know. Did yep. that I do a good job at that, Deb? <laughs> yeah, you did. I mean, that's the bottom line. We're just going to let everybody know if it's our listing that there is you know, recording devices, whether it's a video or or an audio, technically they shouldn't have the audio on, but you know, they're not going to turn it off. So. Exactly. And the littlest things, and I'll tell you two quick stories about this is that you're the, just walking up to the door, doing something you think is innocent could upset the seller 
and hurt uh, your uh, your buyer's chance of getting the house. And we had two agents that had little tiny children with them. They were just a couple years old that were relatives of theirs. One was last was a grandson. It was like three years old. And the one before that was a niece of another agent. It was like six or eight years old, somewhere around there. And they thought they're like, oh, I'm going to show my, my grandson or niece how to be a realtor and they're pressing the buttons on the key. And while they're pressing the buttons to get in the house, they're telling their the niece in this one case and their grandson and the other, like, oh, you press one, press five, press six, press two. And the sellers both got upset and two different, different people because the agent told somebody the code to get into their house. So again, you think it's being so, you know, it's a relative, it's safe, it's a, you're, it's a little kid in both of these cases, and but they had ring cameras, called their agent, got upset. Now, what if these buyers, had, if their buyers want to put an offer on the house, that just that one little action of thinking it's it's something that's just so innocent could affect your ability to get, you know, get that contract, uh, you know, uh, buyer into that house and under contract. So just be concerned about that. Some things you do, so you know, little things they think are innocent that are not really doing something wrong could upset someone, even if you were doing something right. Like again, walking through a house. I've had, I've had uh, this happen to one of our years ago. We had one of our listings totally kick out a buyer just because they overheard them say, make comments about their decorations and, and chandeliers and things they had in the house yeah. and just didn't want to take their offer because they just insulted them. Yeah. So now with technology, that was in front of them. <laughs> this is technology. Now we're, you know, people are going to hear what other people have, have to say. So be, be concerned about that. We're not concerned, but, but be aware of that. Cautious. Yep. Cautious. That's um, the word I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome. This is just a little reminder that you all can do a market update if you want to and get the information off of uh, your MLS so that you can put it out on your social and you are the expert in your thing. So this happens to be uh, Cuyahoga County is what I landed on um, and it shows what the original prices were versus what the sale prices are. So you can see that sellers are still, and this is for the last um, six months from January until now. So some of the sellers are still going a little bit high, but they're selling less than what the list price was up until July. In July, we went backwards. So now they're getting more for their houses, but it's summertime things always happen a little bit that way. And this mm -hmm. is all of Cuyahoga County. So it also depends on where the properties were selling, you know, what they're going to do. But um, this shows you as an expert and you can get this information real quickly off of your MLS and post it on your social. And people know that you're actually paying attention to what's happening out there. So. Right. And then this, uh, I'll, I'll just give you a little, my little interpretation of this uh, on a different angle too. As you can see, the prices of the houses, you know, the blue go up as the time goes up, you know, but the original list price didn't go up as much. It just kind of stayed this about the same. So what I see here is you can see it typically in winter, uh, houses sell for less price. Um, the reason being is not just because the houses are worth less in the winter. Sometimes those people are priced too high in the uh, through this fall and into the winter, and then it makes it look. And then they just they they take a less price because they've been sitting on the market a couple months or a month or two yeah. or three months, and they just take what the first offer, and then they they have no negotiating power because they were too high at the end of the year. And then also what 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 you could see what happened original price you can see the prices go up a little bit and then all of a sudden they came down in July. So what my thought of that is that finally one of two things happened. There was stuff on the market still and they dropped, they kept on dropping their price. So the original price cut from June to July came down or what happens uh, sometimes is that 
the the new houses that come on the market say in July or June they there's more houses on the market so they're using those houses that were listed before them as a, a benchmark so if there's a house that got listed in April for 200,000 and now it's uh May end of May June and hasn't sold yet then all of a sudden someone listed their house in June I go I'm going to list it for 195 because that one's been sitting in Ju uh, for more in June so I think that happens sometimes in summer the lower the price comes down because people are just more houses are coming on the market and they're they could see the ones that have been sitting since spring and they're not going to go higher than them their their agents are being smart and go if you want to sell fast you're going to go lower so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense of some like, possible idea of why this graph moves a little bit like that throughout throughout the season so Absolutely perfect way to say it. And so now you have the ammunition to tell people what this means. Um, that's what it's all about, you know, explaining things to the public so they realize that you are the expert and that's why they need to use us. And it also helps to try and get the listings and get the sellers out there to start selling their houses too. And the so. one thing that maybe you could uh, uh, help me check on this, and I haven't looked at it in a while, if they still have it. I mean, um, Several years ago, there was at well was called centralized showings, but now showing time mm -hmm. used to have a report that being able to show how many showings are going on out there at a certain price range at a certain city. You could go, okay, so you could as an agent, yeah, you could search what's sold and what's on the market, but showing time or centralized showing at one time, we could show actually show live how many showings are in a certain price range over a certain period of time. So I, I think that's still possible, but it's probably the paid version of it. You can't do it for free, but I'm going to look into that. Maybe could, we could put a note to check in on that. They um, just sent out a message that showing time has added some more enhanced features. So maybe they are including that in the free version now. I know you can get a lot of information from showing time if you pay them, but their fees are a little bit yes. pricey. So <laughs> a lot of people it, go it with is, the free. It is. But if you have a lot of, uh, the, the thing, the fact of that is, I think that is more better data than anything else. Like if you show uh, in a certain, like say city, say it's Seoul and you say, okay, last week there was 150 showings of all properties, you know, 200 to 250. And then it just falls off the planet. If you go 250 to 300, then you're like, wow, there's less. That's like the tipping point. This is where more buyers are in this price range. And if a seller said, well, I want to list my property for 301. I go, well, look at how many people are looking under to 300. And look at how many people last week are looking above 300. And there's more people here. You might want to just be right at 300 or 299 because yeah. that's what people, so it's good data and I'll, I'll look into that too. But if any agents watching this, check, check out showing time, see if you could find the, see what kind of reports that they give out. And I, I think that is, especially now, this was years ago when maybe 20% of our, of agents uh, and companies were using centralized showings. And now what's, what, what do you think the percent, I think everybody's using everybody, it the free version anyway. Yep. Yeah. So I think the data is a lot better now because everybody's are, you know, 95% of everybody's using it because now it's a part of our MLS. A lot of agents don't even know that like it wasn't part of our MLS <laughs> yeah. before. So, all right, classes, go ahead, Deb. Okay, so uh, the 13th, we have Fair Housing with John Dewey. So John Dewey does work with o OFA. Um, he's also one of our real estate agents. So he teaches civil rights and we happen to have him coming up on the 13th. We also have civil rights if you can't make that one with Hesh on August 3rd. So his are still free. Um, he's doing his Thursday morning classes. So it starts at eight o'clock usually. And it's usually the first Thursday of the month for Hush's classes. Then in September, he's got, oh my goodness, this year is flying, isn't it? Right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, another free class for Hesh is going to be the mortgage process. So what is the mortgage process? If you're unclear of how everything works, 
go to the class. It's two hours on a Thursday morning and he is a phenomenal teacher and he will explain exactly what they do when they're going through the process. It's not going to hurt because then you can educate your peoples, right? And that's what we're all about. In November, we have core fair housing with John Dewey. Um, and that's all I have right now up until November, but I know we have more coming because uh, Mike's not on here. So I'm sure yeah, Mike's he's got not on here. I got to double check on. with him on his classes too. So yeah. um, of next. course, you can always ask us for registration and you can always oh, get course. the past videos on YouTube if you've missed anything. Um, here's your little message. So on the 17th, it's National Lottery Day. So you can spark your business and pop by with lucky lottery tickets. It doesn't have to be much. You can buy a lottery ticket for a dollar, but people like them. You know, they might win some money on it, but it's just the thought that counts. And if you're using a slogan like, I'm lucky to have clients like you, then maybe you can pass your luck on to your clients. But it's just a way for them to be like, hey, I'm just thinking about you type thing. Um, and always getting to be on their mind so that they can refer you to others and so on. Exactly. So I think that's it, right? That's okay. it. That's it for today. So let's see, stop. Yeah, we went a little bit over on that, but we had some good info today. So right. There you go. Stop sharing there. All right. Well, thanks for joining us every day or every week. Well, we didn't that what because it was the fourth of July, right? Yeah, we missed it. Yeah. <laughs> it hit stop sharing. There it is. Uh so sorry we missed you last week, but I don't think we have any Tuesday holidays coming up for a while. So we'll be here. <laughs> yeah. If you need right. anything, you always let us know. Yeah, again, remember, this is just like we kind of hit the tip of the iceberg on different topics. And uh, we want uh, that's why we don't open this up to just chat, because then people are going to get way off on to topic and we're getting stuck and we can't get through this stuff. So please, because every once in a while, you know, a couple of times a week, I get a call. Oh, I watched a video. I wish, you know, can you do a live Zoom? Let me know. I'm like. We, we don't do live. I mean, we're doing it live on Facebook, but not live where we bring in a group because we want to get through the material and then you can reach out to us one on one and we'll go over that. So uh, occasionally I'll have agents reach out and go and they wrote some notes down <laughs> of our videos. Yeah, uh, you know what we forgot to talk about? The hundred minutes of greatness. So we'll have to do that next oh, week. That's, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that next week. So a little teaser about the hundred days of greatness. Uh just to give you the teaser is that uh Debbie and I are uh, going to be uh, certified mentors of the 100 Days of Greatness uh, program through Buffini and Company, Brian Buffini, a real estate trainer. This program has been around and revamped and accelerated and advanced for 30 years. I remember this program taking this program in, you know, uh, with VHS tapes. Yeah. <laughs> 30 years ago when I got into real estate and sitting in that the, with an AV cart in my my first uh, office that I was with 30 years ago. So this program is something that shows you that uh, sales doesn't change much. It's this people, person, business and relationships and referrals and uh, we're excited to, you know, be mentors. So we uh, certified mentors with that. So we could give you this information, you know, the best we can. So, but let, we'll, we'll go more in detail about that next week. So, yep. All right. Thanks, Deb. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, we hope to see many of you very soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.